Hey gang, Dr. Michael Derry here, owner of Revision Health Services, and today I want to talk about degenerative disc disease on an MRI. And so you may have visited a doctor recently or had an MRI and x-ray, and they had classified that as degenerative disc disease at L4, L5, L5, S1, or whatever level of the spine. It can either be in your cervical spine or your neck. And you've got questions related to that. Before you get on Google, let's go over what I see in the clinic when I treat patients with degenerative disc disease, what those images show, what the actual changes are, what is your disc, right? What is disc degeneration? What can be done about it? And what are the best treatments? And that your future may be better than you think. And so let's go over a lot of those high level stuff that MRI showed that uh, disc degeneration, what can be done now? And so let's move forward, hang with me, here we go. All right, guys, so the first question I wanna answer is what is degenerative disc disease? And I think we need a little special guest for this, so let's pull out my, my, one of my prior patients. No, I'm just kidding. So this is your spine, right? So this is your entire spine from your neck down to your pelvis, right? And then here's your vertebral column that holds your discs as well as your spinal nerves and a lot of other really cool stuff. So degenerative disc disease is when one of these structures could be in your lumbar spine or your neck, um, right here, this little fibrocartilaginous disc starts to lose a little bit of height, starts to look different than when it did when you came out of the factory. And so it may be a little bit less flexible, the water absorption may be a little different. There's a ton of water in there. And in the middle of the disc, you have your nucleus pulposus, and then on the outside, you have your annulus, which is an amazing strong structure that has fibers, car um, um, collagen fibers going a million directions that it gives you the ability to bend forward, backwards, side to side, the stuff that we love to do. And so degenerative disc disease is when you have changes in that, right? Any types of changes, there's different grades to the disc degeneration as well. Any types of those changes found on the x-ray or an MRI. So you lay down your back and it's like, zzz, it took you through the movement and you came out, it's like, oh, you have degenerative disc disease at L3, L4, 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 L5, or whatever level it is. What you do with that information next is super, super applicable, but it has can have different grades. And just because you have it doesn't mean you'll have pain. And so degenerative disc disease happens early on in life. And so as early as our 20s, moving on forward, it's not a death sentence, right? We know that we are supposed to have some of those changes because we spend more days on this earth. That means our body, our entire body is gonna degenerate over time. And that's just the way that things are. So what it is, is absolutely common. It's not really a disease. It's more of a mis misnomer, if anything, right? So a disease implies it can be cured, but when you have those changes in your spine, it just means you've been on this earth a few times, it's gone around the sun. And so those changes actually can't be changed back. And so it's not really a disease, it's aging, degenerative disc aging or disc aging is what I should call it. We should call it disc aging, right? And so when your disc is aging, you'll have those changes. It becomes a little less pliable, a little less flexible, a little less water in it, a little smaller. Maybe you notice people as they get older, they start to lose a little bit of height. It's one of the reasons. And so what it is, is that you have spent some time on this earth and that's okay. Okay, so you were recently diagnosed and you have changes in your cervical spine, your thoracic spine, and your lumbar spine that shows degenerative changes or degenerative disc disease. And you want to know what caused that, right? And so the causes of degenerative disc disease, like I said, is most of the time due to revolutions around the sun. So you've just been on this earth a few days. But then other things in your other things in your life have definitely made an impact on that, right? So we know that you have X amount of times your body weight. Uh, pressure on your back when you bend forward or backwards. And if you have extra weight on your body, that's going to increase and increase the wear and tear of your back. It just makes sense. Other things such as smoking or not taking care of yourself, right? Having bad diets or just not moving the way that you should be moving and not taking care of your body over time can all lead to extra pressure and changes into your back. And so when I tell patients and they ask me, like, what caused all this? I'm like, well, well some of it is we don't really know, right? And that's just a part of life. And other part is like, well, Mrs. Jones, like you haven't really taken care of yourself the last 30 years. And f unfortunately for you, like all of those things are now making an impact. And that doesn't mean your prognosis, your outcome is all doom and gloom. What that means is that you just have some work ahead. 
And so we don't really know the cause, but we know things such as lifestyle factors, smoking, obesity, having poor diets, all of that stuff impacts the way that these discs will move and nurture themselves and, and degenerate over time. And so like I mentioned earlier, one of the things about the disc is that it's mostly made of water. And the only way it gets nutrients, because there's no blood in there, the only way it gets its nutrients is through compression and distraction, which means that when we sit down and we stand up or when we wake up in the morning, you know, we're, we're all distracted all night and then we stand stand up and gravity pushes down on this compression, well, your discs are made to do that. They're the shock absorbers of your spine and they love that diffusion, that nutrition of up and down, up and down. And so that's why when you're stiff and you feel better after you move is because you've had some of that nutrition in your spine and nutrition comes from water and the other substances in the water that gives your back that nice nourishment. And so you've had that MRI. The MRI showed degenerative disc disease and the MRI will absolutely show that among many other things, right? The MRI is just a picture. And honestly, if you show that same picture to different doctors, they'll all come up with little different diagnoses or different things that they'll find. And so when you have the changes on your MRI, you must, you must keep in mind that the MRI doesn't show pain, right? So you can't see pain on an MRI. I can't look at an MRI and see changes, degenerative disc disease, level grade one, two, three, whatever, and say that person has pain in their middle of their back. No, that's absolutely not true. We've seen tons of changes on MRI with people without pain and a little bit of change on the MRI and people who have excruciating pain. And so pain does not equal what they find on the MRI, which can be frustrating at points because we want that MRI to kind of solve our problem of pain, but that's not absolutely gonna happen, right? It's gonna take a picture and it's gonna take a picture of everything, but we all know pictures say a thousand words. And so when you have that MRI scan, you're laying on your back to come out, so is degenerative disc disease and you have mild pain, moderate pain, severe pain, it's really what you do next that makes a big difference. So what you do next should be that you team yourself up with an active movement professional because you're most likely having discomfort with movement or throughout your day. And so you've had the MRI, you've showed the changes on your spine. You know, maybe you do have a little bit of a disc degeneration L4, L5, and maybe there's a little bit of decrease around one spinal nerve because that disc provides height. When you have a decrease in height, you have a little bit of decrease in space in that spinal nerve canal, which could give sensation to your leg. And so you could have numbness and tingling down your leg or just a weird feeling in your leg. But as you guys notice, like there's those holes are bigger than the spinal nerve root because there's a little bit of a, a, a built-in like safety measure for your back. And so when we do have changes over spine and we lose some space, there's a little bit of extra space there to help us out. So when you have those changes, you want to know what to do next. Well, what I would do next is like kind of stay off of Google, go in with an active approaches because there is no fixed degenerative to degenerative disc disease. The actual cure to it doesn't exist. It's not really a disease. Remember I talked about that. That's a misnomer. Everybody has it. It's like saying cure aging. Well, think of some things that can help cure some aging. Yeah, it doesn't happen, right? So when you have those changes and you're having those age related changes over, over time, People can look for short-term fixes, but they're not there, right? To improve your discomfort, you have kind of two, two options. You have active approaches and passive approaches. So active being what can you do to make yourself better? Passive being what can be done to you? There's times and places for both. Passive includes ice, heat, medication, surgery, right? All of that stuff can be on the table when you have these changes. Active approaches meaning building your strength, mobility, flexibility, your endurance. And think about the things that you're having problems with, right? It's mostly the latter, right? The active, active stuff. So you're having problems picking things up or moving throughout your day, right? Those are all active things. And what's really, really cool is if you do an MRI on days you feel awful, versus days you feel great and your pain ebbs and flows, that can even be in the morning, right? So in the morning, let's say you're really stiff and achy, but by the afternoon you're feeling well. Well, if I did MRIs at those two separate moments of your body, your tissues would be exactly the same, but how it feels is completely different. So that's when you should move into more of the active approach. Not only is it more evidence-based, but the outcomes in the long term are better. So if you're thinking 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road and you want the best outcome possible, it is worth spending time learning your back and using physical 
physical therapy, exercise, stretching, and mobility to improve the way your back feels and moves to give those discs some more nourishment so you can have a better outcome is well worth your time. Now, medications can have their place to help reduce spasm-like discomfort. Sometimes a typical one-two punch for primary care providers or other physicians would be muscle relaxers, muscle relaxers and anti-inflammatories. If you're in that really acute, I can't move anywhere phase, sometimes injections can help for people with really bad radicular pain or super bad nerve pain down their leg. But the long-term efficiency and efficacy of those things are just not that good. And so we wanna use more of an active approach because that's been shown to be better not only for acute, but chronic pain as well. And we don't want you to have chronic pain, but if that does happen, those approaches are our best or high reward and low risk. And so what can be done to prevent degenerative disc disease? Well, not a whole lot, right? And so we talked about that earlier, but when you think about prevention, when you think about stacking as many cards in your favor as you can. And so final thoughts associated around degenerative disc disease, the finding on the MRI and what your future has to hold is that it's normal. It's absolutely normal to have those changes because you've been on this earth for a few days. It's well earned. You've earned those changes a little bit, right? So use that information to your advantage and knowing that just because it shows it on the MRI doesn't mean my future is going to be doom and gloom. I can absolutely make myself feel better, but it's going to be an investment. Time and resources for you to learn your body, learn how it moves, learn how to make it better. And all of that takes effort. And guys, I hate to say it sometimes, but health is earned. Health is absolutely earned. If you want to feel your best, you've got to do your best. And so stack as many cards in your favor as you can. Turn around your diet and lifestyle if you need to. If you need help doing it, that's absolutely okay. Let's learn what's most effective for your body right away. And so degenerative disc disease and MRI is absolutely prevalent anywhere from your 20s all the way up. It's there, it's absolutely gonna be there, but it's a normal part of aging. You can have it in your neck or your lower back, and that doesn't mean that your neck and lower back is gonna bother you forever. It just means that you may have to give your body some TLC along the way. So guys, if you like this information, subscribe to the channel, put some comments down below in the description. I wanna continue answering high level questions for you guys because I feel like this information is better to be heard first in the very beginning. So you can kind of take the other information you find on Google and other people who are spending a ton of money on ads to get that information in front of you. But knowing what the evidence shows is that we wanna have more of an active approach. And so guys, as I always say, actively stay healthy, keep moving and take care of yourself.